little while ago I brought Carrier Command 2 onto the channel. Carrier Command 2 is a simulation where you're playing in a futuristic aircraft carrier. You control all of the aircraft, all of the ground vehicles. You can play it in co-op up to 16 players. You orchestrate these massive combined arms attacks from the sea. And, uh, and there's a lot to learn, and the tutorial is good, but it's not great, and there's not a ton of resources out there. This game's made by Micropros. If you kind of like what you're seeing as I work through this tutorial, you can grab a copy of the game over at nexus.gg slash controlled pairs gaming. I kind of talked through this tutorial on the fly to my buddies as we were getting ready to play some co-op. Bunch of co-op footage on the way and it was phenomenal, but I wanted to make sure everyone had a baseline understanding of the game, so I worked through every seat in the cabin and hit all of the basics. Hopefully you guys find this valuable as well. I'm Controlled Pairs and I play the most immersive tactical shooters and combat sims in the world. This is Carrier Command 2. Alright, so uh, Helm, obviously responsible for controlling the boat. Click on the freaking steering wheel to steer once you're behind the steering wheel w a s d well it's really w and s so w moves the throttle forward s moves it back throttle's located to the left um three displays you can modify what the displays show by clicking on them and then manipulating the settings in the display so you can choose what to show precipitation fog wind depth that sort of stuff um, if you look up at the three displays up high on the far left you have your propulsion that'll let you know how fast you are going and where the uh, where the uh, the thrust is coming from. You can actually change from like your bow thrusters to um, I don't know what all the options are. Where are they? Yeah, there you go. So if you look to the left of the center DDI DDI the center uh, heads up display, there's a side thrusters button and a reverse button. So you can change from like your typical just forward backward. Side thrusters will let you push away from like land, and then reverse will let you, let you back up if you're like running aground. You can also kill the engine. Uh, and start the engine and we'll talk about the engineer seat here in a second but as you crank up the thrust you're also using power so if you've ever played um, like Elite Dangerous or any other kind of like space sim there's power management in this game and uh, you can you know you'll, you'll end up draining power and efficiency so just really quickly if you look over here to the left at the engineer seat the power meter right there just to the right of the power meter is breakers as I flip breakers off power is going to get reallocated in different spots so that's the main breaker that kills all power on the ship obviously if I kill my weapon breaker the power pool goes down you can do the same with the radar and everything else so if you're traveling for example a tip would be like disable your weapons keep your radar up so you can see threats at a distance but disable your weapons save some power so you can boost your propulsion uh, are we good so far I know I'm just like throwing fuck tons of information at you guys Going good right now. Okay, so um, that's the top left display from the helm seat. Top center is your compass, pretty self-explanatory. Top right is your depth sonar. This actually matters because you can run aground. When you run aground, you will become damaged. Um, I don't know what activate and silence says. Oh, yeah, that's your alarm. So if I activate that, battle stations were taken damage, etc. If you want to get super semi or just make memes, you can do it like that. Um <laughs> Back down to the bottom. There you go. Good meme. Uh, back down to the bottom, to the right of the center display, you've got speed, throttle, and side thrusters. And then just to the right of the steering wheel, and this is helpful. Um, so if you're driving this thing, you can steer it on the, the heading that you'd like, and then you can activate maintain heading, and then the computer will take over the helm and manipulate it as required to maintain the heading that you desired when you first activated it. So that's just a, an up-down, and you can see the... Uh, this the wheel will react to it steering lock is different so whereas maintain heading takes into account drift and wind and all that sort of stuff steering lock literally just means the wheel's not going to move and you're kind of at the mercy of uh you know the the freaking wind and the current and all that sort of stuff so that's what those two functions do navigation lights it's just an aesthetic it doesn't do anything else i don't think the ai can see lights at range and that is it for the navigation or the uh driver's seat what do you call this the, helm. uh, the helmsman, helmsman. The helmsman. Yeah. cool next seat uh we'll move to i guess we can call this what the surface warfare officer is kind of this seat right yeah. um all of these switches have a uh little activate deactivate thing on them 
it's really just kind of like for the sake of this sim and to prevent you from negligently discharging missiles and stuff. And if you activate this stuff, it begins pulling power, right? So if I like flip all these switches on, I'm pulling power. But again, the cheat code there is if you need to save power, just go over to the breaker and disable the weapon so you don't have to flip all of these switches individually. Um, once you've activated the weapon systems, I'll kind of work just from left to right across the console. Uh, Anti-aircraft weapons are on the far left. You have two missile launchers. They're located just off to the 12 o'clock to like the front right, about the, the 1 o'clock really of the radar sweep. Yeah, to the left of the elevator. Yeah, and, and you'll know they're ready to fire on something if these things are flashing. So like the green bar on the AA panel will start flashing red, and that means you know it has a lock. So then you can kind of figure out what it's locked on by looking at the radar, get an idea of it's if it's within range or not. Don't ask me what the range is. I have no clue. Uh, but if it's locked on, it, it will track the target. Whether or not it'll impact is a different story. Uh, and to fire, all you got to do is click launch the missile. Of course, there is ammunition in this game. So if you look up at the top, it'll tell you how many missiles you've got in the magazine. And then if you run out up here, you have to rearm from your stores, but your stores can run out. That's a problem for the logistician, which we'll get to in a little while. Um, the CIW, how do you say that, Wolfpack? I feel like you'd know what that means. Seawiz? Yeah, Seawiz. It's, it's CRAM for Navy people. Um it is, uh, they're the automated turrets that are meant to interdict projectiles coming at the vessel. So if we're taking, like, getting shot at by cruise missiles or anything like that, or just missiles in general, um, or even aircraft that are flying close to the vessel, the Sea Whiz will automatically engage it with mini guns. I'm going to skip the radar sweep in the viewing scope for now and come straight over to the flare launcher. If I turn the flare launcher on, it's, it's quite literally just meant to illuminate stuff, so it's super dark. You want to see, you know, enemy... Uh, amphibious vessels close to the ship you can click launch flare and it will do exactly that um i've never used cruise missiles who has uh, i have I, yeah okay. uh, anyone want to talk through um, cruise missiles yeah so basically anytime control. you're given a camera so be that on an albatross right or oh is that just the carrier stuff? missile carrier missile cruise yeah. missile same thing mm -hmm. okay yeah, 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 yeah. yeah it's a it's a laser guided missile that can be controlled from any gimbaled camera in the game oh yeah. okay is that yeah. accurate? Yeah, I actually like okay. punch coordinate for it. You just laser. Yeah, so if we if we just put an albatross up, for example, right now, and if someone who knows what they're doing can jump into that albatross and just call in a missile like to the front uh, of the ship. Yeah, cool. I can do so that. So we've got someone jumping in the albatross right now. They can jump into the gimbaled camera, change weapons by clicking or hitting Z on the keyboard over to the carrier missile. Uh, and then they quite literally just look at a target and click, and if it's within range, the carrier will launch a missile and it will track the point of aim from that uh, gimbaled uh, camera. Just let me know yeah, whenever you find it. Yeah, the exact we're launching. Boom. Oh, yeah. There it is. Wow. There it goes. Wow. Yeah. Uh, you just put it in the water in front of us. The <laughs> the shit out of that water. Yo, isn't that um, cool, though? Yep. I think it's so cool. It's I love cool. it. Um, all right, so that's how the carrier missile and our cruise missile work. We already talked flares. Uh, all right, torpedoes. So this is, like in my estimate, amongst the most OP weapons in the game. Um, armed, disarmed works the exact same way. Bottom line, you can load the torpedo by coming over to where it says L1, R1, L2, R2, clicking the load. It'll flash until it's completely loaded. Once it's loaded, all you gotta do is click the launch torpedo button and it will fire. Activation delay, which is the top number on the center console, um, is how many seconds after the torpedo's in the water until it's armed. Like So it's a minimum arming distance, except it's time rather than distance. And then bearing, that's the direction that it's going to track. So if I manipulate the bearing, by clicking up on the arrow, you can then look at the radar sweep in that red uh, line that's moving around. That's the direction of aim. That's the point of aim for that torpedo. The torpedoes in this game are also OP in the sense that they'll travel out to 15 kilometers, and then they will track based off of engine noise. So if you've got a moving enemy naval target, it will automatically track that naval target if you're close. The best way to get a good, accurate shot is having someone look into the viewing scope point the viewing scope reticle directly at the target and then read the bearing then dial in that bearing on the torpedo and then fire your torpedoes makes sense earlier i shot one and they uh they put a, a countermeasure uh yeah the, uh, noise maker and the torpedo is like nope i'm going this way yes yeah, so that, that's uh that's a great point here so we've got torpedoes loaded right now if i want to switch a noise maker you know into two of my tubes i can click load noise maker. i guess i can't because i already loaded torpedoes can i yeah, unload yeah. torpedoes i don't think so 
Okay, well, buy torpedoes. Uh, uh, I can. Uh, oh, you can see them fly <laughs> out. Yeah, as long as you. Uh... I That's know. Awesome. I just, I just fired them. <laughs> oh, they have a weight too. Yeah. yeah. Oh, look, uh, you can see it. All right, so now we've got uh, noisemakers loaded. So we just talked about how torpedoes will track sound. So we make sound. That's not good. So if we get start, if we start getting engaged by torpedo, torpedoes, you can think about like how we would defend against that. Like drop noisemakers, crank the helm Shut hard the left, engine. kill the engine, right? Like use the breaker to just kill all the sound. Um, so you can kind of get an idea. Let's see what that sounds like. Does that sound like anything? Hey, there's noisemakers going out. Oh, they're fast. Yeah, well, that's cool. Um, all right, so that's uh, that's it for the main weapon station. I guess we didn't talk about. Um, oh, there's countermeasures um, here. Yeah. What's yes. that all about? Someone tell me about that. That's I guess that's like chaff. Yeah, it's, it's, like chaff. it's carrier probably chaff for like missile yeah, stuff. Yeah, they're they're launching back here. Oh, cool. oh, okay, okay, okay. So noisemakers and countermeasures. We'll just use lots of both. Here, I'll shoot some more so you guys can see them. One Yay. and two. Oh, wow. Huh. Cool. They're going to uh, do a thing. No, they just go in the water. Nah, I think things. that's it. I'm going <laughs> to... Just blunk. Yeah, I guess they're just like decoys. Did we yeah, tell everything? Like a, um, uh, okay, so I just Googled it. I'm bringing this okay. albatross back for now, by the way. So, okay. actually, no, I'm going to... Similar to noisemakers, or defense against the previous. Unlike noisemakers, which operate at a distance, countermeasures are fired from the rear of the carrier. And they don't move, and they cause enemy torpedoes to stop tracking targets and travel in a straight line. Oh. Interesting. Okay, we'll keep that in mind. So they're both helpful. Um, all right, so that's uh, the only thing we haven't talked about is the viewing scope. You kind of just need to get in the viewing scope and mess with it. It's a big-ass periscope on the top of this thing. You can zoom in and out with W and S. That's the same of all gimbaled cameras and other like, cameras that you'll manipulate in the game. Um, mouse moves it 360 degrees. You can, uh, once you get in, you won't be able to move it at all. And you're going to be like, well, the camera's locked. To take manual control of any vehicle or any camera in the game, click R. I do not recommend anyone taking manual control of piloting the flying vehicles because we have a limited amount of them and you will Press very likely two to crash get to the camera. them. So, yes, we, if you jump into an albatross or like an aircraft, we'll talk through that in a second, but you're going to want to jump into the camera position the turret position um, and then once you're in that slot you'll uh you'll be able to take control of the camera and the camera only so you'll be able to like laser targets and employ weapons but you're not going to crash the dang thing because the the steering on aircraft in this game it's absolute garbage um so i'll let you guys mess with the viewing scope later once you're in the viewing scope you can employ the rest of the carrier's um offensive weapons including the main carrier gun which is uh artillery that can range like out to yeah. seven ish k somewhere around there um, yeah, um, only you can also employ carrier missiles. What's up? Finder, yep. So you can use any gimbal camera to employ the gun as well. That's a great point. Great point. So if you're like up in an albatross in an orbit, you can use the gimbaled camera on that thing to, f to use the carrier gun to target. So once you're in the uh, in a camera or in the viewing turret of the surface warfare officer's seat, you can change weapons by clicking Z. That'll cycle through your weapons and then um, employ them. So we, we already talked about the cruise missile. Uh, we talked about the big guns. What am I missing? What else is there? I think the ground artillery is something I've never used before. Has anyone the else used that? The ground artillery functions the exact same as the other weaponry. It's just you have to physically mount it to one of your ground vehicles. Okay, so you have to like employ it and you set up like a mortar firing point. That's legit as fuck, by the way. Um, okay, great. Let's uh, we'll move over here to the I guess air and land warfare officers. Um, beginning on the left deck spotlight, nothing surprising there. Vehicle control. So this is where most of the game really takes place. I'm on the far left console right now. Are you guys able to see it? Yeah. yeah. Are you able to see me keeping Carissa here on the field of view and dragging it around? Yep. Okay. Cool. Um, so right now we have, I don't know what the, oh, that's a torpedo that we shot earlier. Uh, right now we have one aircraft on the ship. Someone has told this albatross to land. I'm going to change that just for the sake of manipulating it right now. Uh, and I'm going to tell it to go here. So this is an albatross. It's equivalent to like an MQ-9 or an MQ-1. It's a Predator. It's a fixed wing, super fast jet. Uh, probably like the, the mid-tier aircraft in the game, but kind of the based fixed wing unit in the game. If I want to tell this albatross to go somewhere, I just drag on it, 
and then I can click, but it's a fixed wing aircraft. When it gets to this point, it's gonna try and loiter near that point. If I wanna be a little bit more specific with what I want it to do, I can tell it to go to this spot, and if I click on this X, I can decrease the altitude that it'll try to maintain in orbit there, or I can increase it. It goes up to like, you know, several thousand feet. I can also assign, assign go codes. The go codes work just like they do in door kicker. So I'm gonna tell this albatross to go to this point, climb to 1,000 feet above the surf, and then I'm gonna have him hold at that spot. Then I'm going to drag another one there. Once he gets here, he is going to hold. And he'll wait until I execute go code alpha to move to the next spot, right? So now he's there. He's holding. He's waiting. He's waiting. He's waiting. If I come up here and I click wait alpha, it'll remove that trigger and then they'll start executing. You can assign multiple aircraft go codes. Can someone go ahead? Actually, I'll do this. I'll demonstrate real quick. Um... You have two panels here. You have a surface panel and an air panel. Right now I'm dem demonstrating air stuff. So what I'll do is I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna deploy the rest of our aircraft. So deploy A4, deploy A2, deploy A3. Now if I look up at this CCTV in the top right, you'll see a crane start to move around down below. If you get on the lift that's in the hallway, you can actually go downstairs and you can see this all happening in real time. But suffice it to say that you know these aircraft are being deployed in sequence you'll see them come up on the elevator here shortly i'm going to take this seat and get back on the console you guys feel free to roam and if i'm just like if this isn't valuable just tell me and i'll move on to the next thing um right but i do want to get a couple aircraft up so we can uh provide some more instructions so right now i'm back in the console i'm now back in the far right console and i'm going to demonstrate just a few other commands here um so this one albatross that's up let's say i want it to hold a very specific orbit um, and I want it to be pretty tight to the carrier. What I can do is I can drag a, a waypoint here, I can drag a second waypoint there, and then I can trace it right back onto itself. And now I get this little icon in the center showing that it's gonna fly a racetrack pattern between those two waypoints. And I can come into the waypoints, make sure they've got a similar altitude or manipulate the altitude however I see fit. And now this guy is just gonna kind of move back and forth between each one of these waypoints. And if you look off the nose of the carrier, you'll see him 400 feet or so off of it not too far away maybe cool um, as soon as we get another aircraft deployed you can see him coming up now on the uh, the crane we'll see what we have with this first yeah, one yeah um, a Razorback's already launched or oh has Razor. it okay yeah. alright Razorback is your uh, classic rotary wing aircraft that's good at ground attack it can do some AA stuff as well it can hold you know it's a, it's a helicopter um, it's, uh, it's super, super, super squishy, though, which is it's kind of its only drawback, and it burns through gas like freaking no one's business. Um, so I'm going to put that razor back just in a, a little uh, kind of pattern, a racetrack right over the nose of the carrier. I've got the Albatross doing the same thing. While we're waiting for the rest of these aircraft to deploy, I'll go ahead and jump in the cockpit of these guys. Um, you guys won't be able to see this, unfortunately. I can stream it. Let me stream it. Okay. Cool. So if I want to... Uh, is this another albatross? All right, so here's one thing. I've got two albatrosses up right now. What if I don't want to manage both these guys? I just want them to, like, hold a formation so I've got both of my guys in one spot at one time. I can drag one, tell them to follow the other one. Now I've got two albatrosses in a formation. They will stay linked together. Lead guy is going to follow the trail guy. They'll end up, you know, wingtip to wingtip here eventually and, and fly in that same pattern. Now what if I want to start doing stuff to bad guys? Well, I can jump into this albatross, get a better idea of what he's seeing by clicking on him and going to the camera. Here's our albatross flying around. Um, I could take control of him right now and begin flying him, but if I did that, I would crash because albatrosses are hard to control. So instead, I'm going to jump into the gimbaled camera, which is an item that I would have to equip by pressing 2. Now I'm in the gimbaled camera seat, but I can't move it. To take control of the gimbaled camera, I'm going to hit R. Now I can cycle it, but it's super shaky and difficult to control, so I need to add some stabilization. I do that by pressing T. Stabilization. Oh, it was already on. Uh, stabilization is on. You've got three modes here. So if I press T once, I get stabilization. If I press it again, I get tracking. Tracking is good for holding one spot. So if I want to come over here and stare right here at this little radar thing, I can enable tracking and my gimbaled camera will stay locked onto that thing constantly. Now, if I want to engage this target, all, right now I've got the carrier gun selected. I know that because if I look over on the left, I can see my cycling, uh, my weapon cycling through ground artillery, guided missile, carrier missile, carrier gun. So if I want to fire the carrier gun, I have it selected. I look at a target that's within range and I left click, 
I'm requesting support. The carrier will be firing shortly. You can see the little percent going up on, on the side yep. of the screen. That'll tell you when it hits 100, it's good to go. And firing solution, there goes the guns. You can see the arty going out and good effects. So now we've got carrier providing naval gunfire supported by a drone in the overhead. Pretty powerful. Um, and that's how you kind of use the gimbal camera. Now, what if I want to use this to, you know, oh, this guy's out of gas. So there's something right there. You see how I'm seeing that right there? He's out of gas. If I go back into the camera. I see my fuel level on the right is just below 50%. So he's basically calling himself bingo. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this guy in a little orbit here. I'm going to allow this guy to land. If I want to land one of these aircraft, all I got to do is trace it back to the carrier. Remember, they got to fly the pattern. It takes a while to get everybody to land. So if you've got a bunch of stuff up and you're kind of running out of gas, there's no way to refuel in flight right now. Um, so you need to kind of figure that out and start, you know, yeah, you can see <laughs> getting people home. <laughs> up ahead, up on the screen above fares, you can see the albatross in the holding pattern. It's going to go around and then it's going to come back in. Yep. Um, cool. So if I want these guys to start attacking bad guys, is this a, that's an enemy aircraft right there. I'm just going to take this albatross and probably get him killed. Um, but get a good demonstration out of it. Eh. I'll put this guy over here, see if he sees anything. What are you? You're a razor bill. You're an albatross. You're a razor bill. The bottom line, though, is, is as I take this albatross over here, we're going to start seeing... Oh, that's a... Is that a naval vehicle? Is that what those are? Yeah, there's, those are two Navy yeah. ships, yeah. yeah. Okay, so if I jump into this guy, we can talk about... Um, where are they at? Fucking cruise missile that shit. <laughs> is that them over there? Looking, I'm looking. Someone tell me where he's at with respect to the albatross, if you guys get a chance. Is he off my left wing, right wing? Uh, Which, I'm Which looking for those looking na at? the Looks naval like vessels. To your left. There you left. I oh, yeah, I see some here. Okay, nine. all right. So I've got eyes on these two uh, small naval vessels over here. I know that they're bad guys. Right now I'm having an issue tracking them, so I'm going to go ahead and stabilize and then enable tracking. Now I've got them easy. If I center up my crosshair right here in the middle, I'm going to learn about these targets. That, so I know this is a walrus, so it's a medium armored vehicle. I've moved too far away right now. That's why I'm not able to uh, to tag them. I'm coming back towards them now. Here yeah, we go. Starting to get fidelity on these dudes again. So we've got a walrus here. And he, he, he has missiles. This walrus... is an AA walrus, right? So now I know that's a high payoff target. I don't know. I think we're probably out of range. No, we're not. All right, I'm going to go ahead and request a carrier missile on this guy. The missile has launched from the carrier back at you guys, and he is currently 10,000 meters away and closing. I'll try to tag the rest of these dudes while I'm here. I know I've got time because You got an incoming missile? Yeah, nah. straight it. Straight what do you, you think? I'm a coward? Yeah. Evasive maneuvers. 10 seconds. Yo, someone yeah. track this thing back. It's it's on you. It's on you. Track it Five, back. Yeah. Four, Steer three, me home. Two. Oh. Miss. Rip. Yep. You're good. I'm waiting on this missile to get here, dude. Okay, I mean, now, now that they've engaged you, all those Navy ships are moving towards you. So what you're saying is everything is going fine right now? This yeah. is the slowest missile in history. It's still 7K out. Are you guys seeing this? Yeah, you got at least. <laughs> yeah, I, I literally am watching it from the side of the ship. You got about right. uh, 25 seconds before it connects, <laughs> maybe. Oh. Uh, but you guys understand how this works. So if I don't want to control all this manually, like let's say I want to actually employ the munitions that are on my uh, wings rather than fire from the carrier, the easiest way to do that is actually to go back to the carrier itself. Um, so I can come back here and I can, this is a suicide mission by the way. So let's say I want to orchestrate an attack. I'm going to go ahead and bring this albatross here. I'm going to put him in a little holding pattern right there. And I'm going to say from this waypoint, I want him to launch an attack on this 
vehicle and I want that to be a double missile attack because I know there's an AA vehicle in the area. Two missiles gives me my best shot at overwhelming it. I'll only attack from this waypoint and then I'll re-enter this pattern. So that's like a way to set that up. I could also make this a go code and then I could scatter other aircraft along the periphery and give them all go codes and have everyone push at the same time to try and overwhelm the enemy's air defenses. Um, so you kind of understand, you know, some of the um, some of the the I don't know. There we go. There, there's missiles. There's a lot of other missiles in the air right there. So I'm gonna oh, break man. contact. Get the hell done. out of here. Ooh, we gotta get these oh, razor, yeah, razor, the razor bills. Razor bills. Razor bills got to get on the deck. Razor bills run out of gas. So I'm gonna get them in the oh, pattern. No. Oh, One missile, no that. effect. Those those guns, those uh, navy ships are, are throwing yeah, a bunch of missiles. Like two it. missiles, no effect. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you've got two coming in on you, like a two-one radar. How far? Where are they? You can also uh, equip countermeasures, right? right? And this, these things, I, will they employ? Oh, that's coming for you guys, guys. Uh oh. Okay. Oh, oh, okay. Well, that's fine. No, 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 they're coming for you. <laughs> Uh, counter mission, oh, go! Shit. Turn on that Sea Whiz. Yeah, yeah, the Sea Whiz engaged on. it. He was on. Oh. Uh, it's still Good coming. Effect. Wait, there's one more? Or is that not ours? Which one is that? Alright. Uh, so I you guys, will clap back. So I, I'm gonna... Yeah, you guys get the idea here, right? So all, we've told all of our aircraft to recover. We'll see if everything... Our first Razor Bill's landing right now. Low on gas. The second one's in the pattern. Our Albatross is coming home. The entire enemy navy is coming for us, uh, but so we understand now how to work the helm, how to work. What's flashing? Are we shooting air to anti-aircraft weapons right uh, now? We're shooting off cruise, no, missiles? cruise missiles. Okay, cool. You guys yeah. do you. All right, so we're good on the station so far. Yeah. Um, yeah. Captain's chair, self-explanatory, big ass map, lots of situational awareness, pretty badass map, a uh, lot of information on it. Um, okay, last two seats. So logistics. I'm not. I've only captured a couple islands, so I can't speak with any expertise on this, but I can speak to it generally. Um, the bottom line, the way the game works is there's islands scattered across the map. You have to capture an island. That island turns into a resource node. Each island only produces one type of resources. resource. Your resource could be uh, ammunition. It could be a weapon. It could be vehicle chassis. It could be you know fuel. It could be uh, a warehouse. And they all have different functions, so it's very like real-time strategy in that way. Um, so let's say you have an ammunition island, and we need ammunition. So we attack that island, we deploy virus bots on the base of that island that gives us possession of that island. That island then is available to produce ammunition on our behalf. If we need to get that ammunition to our carrier, we come over to this screen right now that's on the far left. It's the inventory and logistics screen, um, and you just click on it to open it up. You scroll through the the uh, all of this stuff that's available and I can just scroll down through here three columns I've got what's available in my warehouses so one of my islands is like a legitimate warehouse where I compile all of my stuff um, then I've got a pending order so if I can place an order by clicking here and then increasing the number of things that I want and that'll remain like an order that's open and I've tasked my automated logistics fleet to bring that stuff to me and then uh, in stock on the carrier column, which is actually aboard the vehicle. At the top of the screen, you see our weight limit. So right now we have 265,000 whatever units, kilograms um, of our total allotment. Um, so we're you know at 25% or so of our total allotted uh, weight or mass. Um, the, uh, so if I wanted to order ammunition in this case, I could come over here, or uh, flares in this case, I could come over here and I could start saying, hey, I need four flares. And then what's going to happen is my barge, which we have one, it's currently idle, it'll go to our warehouse, it'll secure those three flares, and it will bring it to us in game, and it will deliver it to us. If we go to the map, we can see where we are, we can see where our barge is. So when you place an order, whatever resource node you have will begin producing it, and then the barge will have to go to that spot and bring it to your warehouse or to your carrier. Now, since we know we have an order that's pending, and right now this small munitions here is, uh, you know, they're building small munitions for, uh, for us. If I want to get this to my boat in an efficient way, I'll take everything being produced on this island, and I'll say, hey, I want this to all be consolidated at my warehouse. Then my barge, instead of being idle, 
will move stuff from this location and stockpile it at my warehouse, right? And then if I have multiple barges, I can have one working, you know, one leg, and then I can have a separate one working the the ultimate leg out to the carrier. Um, so now my barge will end up, you know, going to work here in a minute, ideally. But you guys get the idea here. So as we begin to take other islands, we'd be drawing like a mesh network um, that leads yep. back to a warehouse, and then we'd be you know, tasking barges to move stuff from those production locations to the warehouse and then from the warehouse out to the vessel. And we'd be mindful of the array of resources across the map because that's going to inform how we navigate the whole thing, what resources we unlock in what sequence, and uh, so on and so forth. I'm not going to get too nerdy about it. You guys understand that. The other part of the logistics seat is uh, customizing your shit. So if you click over here on these, the vehicle panel, it looks very similar to the air and ground warfare seat, but if I click on a vehicle here I can actually go in and customize it so this seal has one slot a one weapon slot and right now he has a 30 millimeter cannon but it, as we unlock islands with other stuff I can put anti-air I can put missiles I can put virus bots which is the item that's used to capture islands I can put a gimbaled camera so I can call for support on my little seal and the seal is just like the lightest amphibious assault unit in the game um, and you can customize every single vehicle in the game and that kind of you know is the biggest factor in uh, unlocking stuff and placing your orders and customizing stuff. Um, so you can imagine like how this meta could end up looking. I could have one albatross as like a scout where I put a bunch of external fuel tanks and a gimbaled camera and I fly it really, really high all the time and I just keep it in like a permanent or orbit above the carrier uh, as a long range scout and uh, use it to kind of improve the fidelity of an island before we launch an assault on it. And then I could have other ones equipped for ground attack or suppression of enemy air defense. I could do the same thing with my helicopters uh, and you have to kind of like decide how you're going to design your forces to go and, and make this shit all happen. And I don't really know the best combos for like the meta of the game. I can speak to like, you know, what logically makes sense, but certainly not what works great in the game. Um, all right, engineer seat. The biggest thing over here, we already talked power. The only other major responsibility is damage control and monitoring the fuel. So fuel is a factor. Uh, it's probably the most important resource to get early in the game. Um, fuel is shown very clearly over here on the left side. When you run out of fuel, you need more of it. If we need to repair stuff, if you go up on the top right on the engineer seat, on the left is the damage status, on the right is repair. Um, if the hole is damaged at all, it will bleed slowly. So let's say we take just generic damage to the hole and the hole drops from 100% to 99%. If we take no action to repair the hole, it will slowly bleed from 99% down to zero and then it, the carrier will be destroyed. And that's like your base HP. Um, if you begin to lose other nodes, like your weapons or the bridge or all this, those all is a, it's a capability loss. So if you lose a weapon, you're losing the ability to fire that weapon, but the carrier isn't going to sink. If you, if you lose the hole, the carrier will sink eventually. Um, the catch is you can only prioritize repair of one thing at a time. So if I have hole and weapon damage and I'm in a fight, I have to make a decision to either repair the weapon or repair the hole. So it's like a, a strategic decision or a tactical decision to get my main gun back up or to save the ship from sinking. And you're kind of like balancing these things at once. And so what you'll see is as we take damage, you'll click one of these buttons and it'll allow you to flip it uh, into the green and activate repairs, which is going to suck down power to repair the HP of the hole at the expense of not doing that for whatever else is damaged. And you have to choose one at a time. Does that make sense? It's kind of, it's intuitive once you see it for the first time. Um, okay, I'll shut up now. I know that was a lot, guys. I just talked for like 15 or 20 minutes and I apologize for wasting your time. But if you found it valuable, great. It's yeah. Lovely. You Weird. can also uh, open this up and blow up the ship. How do you do that? Do that. Where is it? <laughs> <gasps> it's a uh, little panel. Oh, I was oh clicking on that God. earlier. That was yeah. only, no you can go to the enemy ship and blow them up. But Activate system. Uh, you have so to put in a key. Out of, out, 